Welcome back to Repair Lawnmowers for Profit. As you can see, um, it currently looks like I, I haven't got a lawnmower, but I've actually got my dad's lawnmower, which he uses uh, at his house. And while I've been out, he's dropped that round at my house because we're still under this lockdown coronavirus, don't go near anyone thing. So uh, I'm going to get it out of the garage and uh, have a go at it. But um, I could do with a bit of help, but there's nobody to help me really. So, what are you doing? I'm taking it apart. What have you taken apart? Uh, I've taken off the recoil cover, the yeah. air filter. Alright, well, what's wrong with it? Is this it? Is this your granddad's one that dropped off? Yeah. What's up with it? Uh, the electric start doesn't work. The electric all. start? Throttle, yeah. throttle cable. Throttle cable. You've been in here doing this on your own. The throttle cable don't work. Yeah, it don't work. Did you start it up? Yes, I did. What, what's up with it then? What did it do when you started it? Uh, the... That cover there, that yes. recoil cover, this? Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, what about it? Over. And there wasn't a bolt, one of the screws in the front of it, so it's been flapping around. Was it all making a clanking noise? Yes. All oh, right. Was it? Was there not one even one in it? Where, no. whereabouts? One the one in it. Show me where you took it off and where they want one. Uh, I took it off around oh, near the front on the front yes, there. Yeah, the front. All right. There's no bolt in there. It was clanking because of the cover. Did it run? Uh, yeah. All right. All revving up and down. Or. Uh, all right. To be honest. Yes, it. Yeah. A bit lumpy or not? Just. Yeah. 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 All right, right. Well, I can't show that running then. That's good. Is that what you've been doing during lockdown? Yes. Then you're a good lad. Leave him a comment in the comment section. So what have we got then? What engine have we got here? What is it? A Briggs Swat Quattro Forty. Mm. And we're going to just service this up for him, aren't we? Um, these. What do you think of these throttle cables? Do they, they don't really do much, do they? They don't really work. Do that one. I've never had one that works very well. Try that. Go on. Move it all about. Is it really stiff? Does it even move about? I mean they don't really do a lot. I think what we'll do with that mate, if you want, because he only uses it to cut a little bit of waste grass, don't he? Yeah. Is we'll take it off because he won't use it. Exactly. I asked him the other day, I said, you use the throttle? He said, no it don't work, so we'll take that off. Don't really need one on this sort of mower because there's only a little bit of adjustment on here. I mean, all honesty, no one really uh, uses them on these type of little lawnmowers. So we'll take that off. Um, we're going to have to sort that recoil cover out. That was, was it like vibrating and making an awful vibrating noise and stuff? Yes. Right, and you took the exhaust off once it cooled down. You didn't burn your fingers, did you? Oh, no. No? Good, that's good. So, what do you think we should do with it then? Um, What's next? Service it? Yes, yeah, service it. Carburetor or something? Should we do all that for him? Sharp up blade and take bits off it? Yeah. Right, you can take this throttle off then. I want this off here, I don't like these. Um, it doesn't need to be on. You find yourself a 10mm extended socket. Well, you don't need me anyway, do you? And you can take that off there. And I've just yeah. got in, so I'm going to go and have a shower. Right, you can take that throttle cable off then. Right, right, you take a spark plug lead off, haven't you? Yep. Good, and you haven't put your fingers under. Under where? The blood. Un no, under anywhere. No. Under anywhere you can't see them. No. No, well, you're alright then, aren't you? You can take that throttle cable I've off then. I've tried that, but I can't. We can't, are you in your car? I've tried it, it's a 10mm socket. 10mm socket? Looks like it, well, maybe it's not a 10. Get an 8. Yeah, Try and get an 8 out of there, come on. I'll try the Show everybody at home. You might need a longer one, might you? Uh, maybe, maybe it's not long enough, maybe that one might do. Try that one there. Yeah, stick it over that there and see if it goes in there. Come on, put it over there and see if it fits. Does that does that fit? Feels big, but does it feel big? Let me have a quick feel for you. Oh yeah, see what you mean. No, maybe it's too small. Find a ten. Mm, okay. Guess the socket. Um... Go on, next to it. Too long. What size is that? What's it got on it? Ten millimeters. Have a look at that one. I'll set you up with that. There you go, that fits. Can you get that? Oh, you don't want to use that though. Can you do it with that? Put that in there Maybe. and we'll just see if you've got strong it. enough. You don't really need to be strong, you just need to have the right tool, don't you? Yeah, look at that. Yeah. You've already undone that. No, I haven't. You must have done. I've been I, bet you've, I bet your brother's been out at night and undone it, hasn't he? Ah, oh, no. What's he been doing today? Not a lot, really. No, has he done some homework? Yeah. Good. It's boring, this isolation lark, isn't it? It's rubbish, isn't it? I think it's already came off. Oh, it's in there. Oh, it's in there, is it? How are we going to get that out then? Oh, <laughs> right. That works. So we need another one out, don't we? We'll get that other one out of there. Yep. Are you using my metal parts tray? Cheeky uh, monkey. Well. Oh, you got your own tub, have you? Yeah. All right, I'll put them in there then. Put your bits in there, can't yeah. you? We'll take that off. We'll give this carb a service. We'll take this blade off and we'll have a look round it. We'll take a few bits off and I'll probably try that uh, flywheel tool again as well. That vibrates on there for getting that actual flywheel off there. So, how's that one doing? What would you do if you couldn't get that one done? Would you put it on that one there? Yeah, do you see? Good lad, that's right. 
And you've been out here all on your own, have you? Yes, I all have. All right, what are you after? Pocket money? No, necessarily. Yeah, I don't even get a pay for this one. This is just three grand, Dad, this one. So, take that off then. Put that in your tub. Just see if you can get that off there then. Mm. Try and keep it in one piece as well. Just in case we want any for spares. Right, grab hold of that, mate, and see if it comes off. There we are. Try and keep it all together. Yep. Give us that bit. You lie that bit on the floor, your other bit. Yeah. Get Put that over there. Hand your head, won't you? Right, then we need to unhook this here, don't we? Do you want to unhook this cable? Oh, yeah. Let's see if you can do that. You have to lift it right up in the air, won't you? Do what you need to do to unhook this. If you've got one of these with a the throttle cable, don't work. It's like a Briggs Get 35 it. classic engine. Don't worry about any of that. Just take it off. That's what I do. So some people are probably writing comment section, hey, you shouldn't take that off, but why? Doesn't work, doesn't really do anything. So I take it off. So, governor springs, have you checked these springs? No. Well, it's all working, isn't it? Because these springs are all bouncing around nice, aren't they? Yep. So that's all all right. So I think we'll just strip this down. We'll do this uh, a quick service and then we can put this back together, can't we? Yes. Right. Right, so David's kindly come out here today. He's been stuck at home like the rest of us are all kind of uh, stuck indoors. A lot of people are stuck indoors at the minute and I'm a little bit limited as uh, what lawnmowers I've got in. So this is actually, as I've said, is my dad's, David's granddad's. So I'm just going to serve this as for him. I've done these loads of times. If you look in the top right hand corner of your screen now you'll see a link to a massive playlist full of all the videos relating to Briggs and Stratton. But while I've got this on the bench I'm not sure if I'm going to take this engine off this mower, but I'm going to show you around a few things. I'm going to take quite a few parts off this actual engine. I'll show you how to take everything off, how to set a few things, and how to put a few things back together. I'm also going to try this actual uh, air hammer I've got on here to take this flywheel off as well, and see if that still works as well as it did last time. So we'll get started, take a few bits off this. I'll describe what I'm doing. I'm also specifically going to try and show you a few parts that kind of are prone to leaks whether it's fuel leaks or air leaks as well and I'll go through that as we go along so really quick and easy to start just to take the whole carb off the whole tank and everything this is just two well at, at the minute these are 10 mil bolts and there should be really I think it's a 13 and a 10 well that's what they've got in and um, we'll pull them out of there I'll just put them on there this whole thing pulls off, you can see here at the top there's just one linkage if you just bend this down a little bit this whole tank comes off like that and that's the absolute beauty of having this type of lawnmower now I had a message earlier today because that tank there with that carb set up on I actually uh, messed about with one of these last year and tried to fit one of these actual Briggs and Stratton like um, primer style tanks so an SV150 mount field engine and I kind of got it fitted and I had this great big long tube across here and it eliminated all the problems that I don't like with the SV150 engines you find on a lot of mount field lawnmowers so someone messaged me about that today saying they'd actually done this and they'd taken actual uh, a chunk out the side of the plastic um, recoil on the SV150 and they'd use this which is a control arm along the front I think they've swapped all that over from the SV150 as well I'll show you that closer up in a little while but he basically swapped it all over and he actually managed to get um, like a setup where the actual carbon tank sits on properly so I've asked him to send a few pictures over to the Facebook page if you've not been over there I actually have a Facebook page which is at uh, obviously Facebook which is called Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit so take a look on Facebook if you want to go on there um, one thing just to mention about that page, I, I try and answer quite a lot of messages I got, I get on uh, Facebook, but I kind of go to it and um, sometimes the messages come through and sometimes they come through as comments and when I actually go to try and find them I don't know where they go, so if you've messaged me and I ain't got back to you, a lot of the time it's because I don't know where the message has gone, so I'm not very good with stuff like that, um, but this is uh, where I'm at with this. And the reason I want to take this off if I can, if I can be bothered, is these are supposed to have a drain plug in the bottom. My mate Pete Froud, who's always on here, he's always on all the normal channels, he's got his own channel himself. He's always telling me that he drains them from the bottom. There's actually a drain plug in the bottom of these engines, so I might have a look at that as well. So, that's the carb, that's the tank out of the way. These governor springs here, and this linkage all stay attached to this air vein, but we'll take all that off as well. We'll take this ignition coil off. 
So as I said I'm going to take quite a few parts off this. I was just about to take this ignition coil off this whole air vein and these springs but of course these are all attached to this control arm and the control arm on the front is actually bolted through. You can see how it's got these top bolts through and actually into the head of the engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these top bolts out, take this actual control arm off, then take the ignition coil off and the reason for that is I can keep all this together, I can keep all the springs and all the linkages together without having to take everything off that can still stay hooked in there for now um, let's do that having an impact for this really helps taking things off as well so this will be kind of a, a matter of seconds really now we can just pack these out like this I'll just take that off there and you can see move out of the way, how everything's still connected together and this part here, which is uh, the governor flap or the air vane if you like this should all come off as well when we remove this ignition coil so let's take that off, just put my bits on there so I don't lose them and we'll just grab hold of that, we'll just set this off, this is normally a quarter inch socket which it is we'll take that one off there, this isn't difficult to set again you have to have an even gap between the ignition coil and the flywheel when you put this back together I'll show you how to do that as well later on. So, uh, as I say, I'm kind of stuck, really, with um, filming things. I wish I had a few more lawnmowers in, but I like getting out in the garage, and I like um, just talking on the end, talking to you guys, and a few ladies that I get comments from, but mainly, it's, I think it's about 90% male is the audience. But I like getting out here and having a chat, and you always leave me a, a good comment in the comments section, which I enjoy watching. So, take that off there. I just said I enjoyed watching the comment section. I did. I do enjoy watching it. I enjoy reading it. Is what I mean. You know what I mean. This um, electrical spade connector here just pulls off the underside here of this, and this whole thing should move away. Then you've got this whole part here. You've got this control arm across the top, and you've got this ignition coil, and all the springs still connected up. So I can just set that to one side out of the way there. I can keep that out of the way so the next thing I just quickly want to do is remove this spark plug here and that's really tight I can't get that off so I normally have somewhere here I have a mallet like that and that's it that was lucky wasn't it on top of my toolbox so let's take that off there look like that we'll take that plug out what's that look like not too bad not too bad I'll put a new one in now I'm just going to remove the rest of these and I'll have a look in here And the reason I want to go in here is I want to show you the actual uh, head gasket as well because I don't know if you watch anyone watches Retro Restore I'm sure a lot of people do follow this channel but he had a, I think it was a web lawnmower and it looked like brand new I think it pretty much was brand new and inside here there's a head gasket and it actually kind of split and perished or whatever had happened to it and it was leaking so it didn't have proper compression and the lawnmower didn't roll and that's all that was wrong with it even though it was new and I've noticed in the comment section of the videos on, on my videos and on some of Martin's videos at Retro Restore that there's a few people that have had those web lawnmowers I think it's spelled W-E-double-B and they've had the same problem where the actual head gasket had gone even though the mower was fairly new I'm just giving these a little bit of a spray up let's just get a have another go at this one again see if this one comes off that's it eventually get the drill going right way sometimes what I do with these I've never had them as stuff as this is I'll try and kind of tighten them the other way just to loosen them off and that's it that was a good example wasn't it so a little bit of luck there on camera that doesn't normally happen to me so we'll get that there and this comes off let's just take a look inside here as well you can see on here because I've taken it off how there's little bits of this actual head gasket that's stuck on here just on the edges it's not really too bad I'm going to show you the actual head here and show you exactly what I mean as well so if we take a look in here, you can see around here there's actually a head gasket and this isn't in brilliant condition, you can see the little gaps where it's actually missing there and you can see, it's hard to tell on camera really, but there's like a lip and this is actually a gasket so if you're having trouble with it starting or just think you've got like a lack of compression you really want to check this, this is one of the things you really need to check because if you haven't got a good gasket on here this doesn't form a good seal and you will have compression problems and problems starting your lawnmower it really does need to be in good order and another place to look is here 
This is actually the, the inlet manifold here. And this underneath here has got a gasket on as well. And sometimes I've had these and the cough and spluttering don't run right no matter how much you've done with the carburetor. So if you've done all the carb and you've checked both the, uh, the keyways and you're still struggling with this, make sure you've got a good seal on the back of here. I always show this on these videos. But there's a couple of rings in the back of here, a black one and a, right, a white one, which are inlet, like inlet rings, seals if you like. Make sure they're sealed properly on there. The next thing's to check are this gasket under here and this head gasket on here. So hopefully you can see in there where these little bits are missing. But generally the seal's good. And it did start and run. David said he had it running earlier. So you can get these parts. They're only cheap. I'm not even sure if that'll even be about four, three or four pounds. In fact, I've got these listed on the website at repairlawmostforprofit.com. Most of the things for these little Briggs engines are listed on there. So I might actually treat him to a new head gasket for that. I think when we uh, get that through the post, we'll put this back together with a brand new one of these in here. So these inlet manifolds here, if you ever buy, if you ever want to buy another one, if you lose it or for whatever reason, just be careful because they've all got slightly different shaped ends. Some of these are round here. You can probably just about see, I'll show you in a minute when I take it off, but this is like a triangular shape around here. You get round ones and some of them are kind of like a rectangle shape. So if you take one off, maybe take a picture of it or you want to replace one that's cracked or I don't know what happens to things, people lose things or whatever they do with them. But if you need another one, make sure that this is the correct shape because there's a different one. And I will just say as well, I don't know, I go on about the website a lot because I'm quite proud of the website, but I've listed all the different shapes of these for these little Briggs engines. This is a Quattro 40 engine, I think. I'm right in saying that this is a four horsepower Briggs instead of a three and a half horsepower. I might be wrong, so leave me a comment in the comments section. They all look the same to me. I think um, the Quattro has just got four horsepower. So that might be what makes the difference to what shape this actual inlet manifold is here. This ignition coil wire here just sits on the top of there, by the way. So we've got hold of that there. I'll just take this off and I want to show you in here. I want to show you the shape of this. I want to show you the gasket as well. So you can see in here what shape it is. It's like, um, I don't know, it looks like ET, doesn't it? Oh, what's that film? Yeah, a short circuit, isn't it? Johnny Five. Uh, Johnny Five, yes, yeah, short circuit. Anyway, inside here, you can see inside, I'll show you, there's a little gasket in there. And this one doesn't look particularly good to be honest with you because it's very old this lawnmower as you can probably tell it's it's not the newest thing we've ever seen you can probably just see in here there's a little gasket and that just sits around there if you're having trouble with compression feels too easy to pull over or starting problems take a look in there and you might just want to replace this gasket and a lot of the time i think i'm right in saying it's actually probably the same price to buy the full inlet manifold that comes with the gasket as it is to try and get hold of a gasket. I'm not even sure if they sell these separately or not. But that's another place to look. So the head gasket and this inlet manifold gasket. Another thing I want to show you as well on the back of this head is all the carbon that builds up. The bit in there seems much worse than that. We can see all the carbon, all the black that builds up. I'm going to scrape that off. I'll do that off camera just with a wire brush and whatever I can get in there and clean all that off. You see these parts here where the valves actually go again. So you don't want them building up too far because we need to make sure that these valves can open and close. You can see here how they work, how the whole thing, the piston moves up and down. You can see these valves will start to rotate and move in and out as well. And you don't want too much carbon buildup that stops these valves moving properly. Another thing to check while you've got this off as well is they actually uh, seat nicely in here because I've had these parts on the outer edge I forget what they're called now so I'm tired but they, they kind of pop out I've had them the inlet kind of pops out and I've had to pin it back before a couple of times but not very often so make sure while you've got this off that both the valves are moving in and out as you can see there that one's moving and that one's moving that's exactly what you want but if you've got the head off make sure everything moves make sure obviously the piston moves make sure the valves move and just take a bit of time to actually clean the head off here and if you're going to go to that trouble you might as well get yourself another head gasket so just scrape this one off here you just pick this off basically and get yourself a new one and stick it on it's as simple as that really get it in the right position the easiest way to do that is to get a new one lie it on here put the bolts through this head 
and the gasket and then fit it back on the lawnmower then everything's lined up you don't have to worry about getting all the holes nice and neatly lined up next thing I want to show you is this breather this actually goes right from this side where the carb is right across here to the side where the exhaust normally is that Dave has already taken off these are all with slack I don't think I've ever got one where you've turned it right around the right way all the way like that and tightened it right up and it stayed tight it's always on an angle like that so don't worry if you screw it back in and it's not completely tight I think they're designed to move about a little bit as long as they go back in like that that's all you need to do but these do actually come out it's not really uh, any s s sensible reason for taking that off but it does come off while I'm filming I thought I'd just take that off this is a protective cover it's like a heat shield and it's like uh, to protect the cooling fins stop them getting uh, all dirt build up down the back I don't particularly like these because I think once you've got dirt down the back of here and into here it can't get out it's no chance of falling out or blowing out on its own so there's a little bolt under here the underside of here I'm not sure what it is if it's a screw or if it's a, an actual nut I can't tell at the minute and I'm going to try and get something in underneath there and take that off I don't really want to bend that out of the way I think I'll just try that with a spanner from underneath I found out you can use a spanner on this this is a 6mm very small 6mm spanner on the bottom of there and I'm hoping there's only one on here and I can take this off So eventually I get that off, what a pain that was. And see all, all this builds up on the inside, and these cooling fins aren't too bad actually, there's a few little bits in them, not going to cause too many problems, but I don't like the way all that collects under there, I've, I don't see many Briggs engines with that on. I'm just wondering why it's there, I wonder if it's a, a heat shield to stop the actual heat of the engine going against the plastic car, because I know there have been incidents with these cars where the actual plastic car kind of warps against the metal tank, and you don't get the good seal between the diaphragm and gasket sometimes that can happen you have to replace the whole carb so not sure whether I'm going to put that back on or not I must just remember to get the screw out of there as well there is actually a hole in the bottom of the actual engine there so if I had the engine off I could have got that off a lot easier from underneath but we've got that off we've taken that out of the way and that's really what I wanted to do next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this actual flywheel off as well We'll take a look inside there mainly because I want to test out this new air hammer I've got again as well and just make sure that that does what I want it to do. So let's just zip this off, I might as well, I've got the tools to do it so let's just take that off. Spark plug's removed remember, just take that nut off there, that's off, put that somewhere safe, lift that off. Now the next thing we need to do is get this actual flywheel off here. So I'm just going to get my little clamp, clamp the handle at the top and that removes this brake at the back. In fact I'll show you while I'm there. I'll just take you off my tripod. It's not going to win any awards for photography in this one but this brake is actually on the back of here. You see this? Or it moves out of the way. If you move this out of the way when you're taking these flywheels off, it's a lot easier to get them off and lift them off out of the way. And the way I do that is I just clamp this with this little clamp. So I'm just going to put that clamp on there when I've got my hands free clamp that and that just moves this brake out of the way and I just wanted to show you that as well this is the kill switch on the back one of my most popular videos is uh, a video on the kill switch as well you must make sure that this is clean and tidy when you pull the lever at the top there's actually a disconnection here between this part that slides out of the way and the actual kill switch so make sure if you can't get any spark that that's working make sure that this wire that runs all the way around here right to here isn't broken as well So I don't know if you could see on that video but that little uh, air hammer there just vibrates it enough with a little bit of leverage underneath one of these bars being very careful just pops it up a little bit and then I can get this actual flywheel off here and this here is woodruff key someone commented I always call it a flywheel key and the reason I call it a flywheel key is because that's how everyone refers to it when they send me messages they'll say how do you take the flywheel key at the top of this crankshaft so I call it the same thing everybody else calls it when they ask me and this uh, keyway here this woodruff key is nice and square 
you don't want any little notches in there, it wants to be completely flat and immaculate all the way around and um, from what David said with this running he, he managed to start this up and he normally struggles with these mowers, he's only, uh, he's only young I think the only one he's been able to start on his own was the brand new mountain field one that we got sent um, this is probably the second one he's managed to do so it must pull over fairly well obviously don't kick back how he'd have told me so we're getting down to some of the uh, bare parts of this now really take that off there, you can see it's only sort of taking me 5-10 minutes to strip this whole thing down here if you wanted you could take this whole cable off the back of here take this whole kill switch off and clean it and everything like that in fact while I've got stuff here why not just take it off there's not much else I can do at the minute as I've said I'm kind of stuck with um, a lot of things really just with uh, the timing of everything and if you are um, watching this and you're kind of self-isolating or social distancing or whatever we're doing I hope it ends soon for everybody's sake because it's not pleasant is it really especially for the people who have got this horrible horrible virus so let's hope you're watching this a year from now in 2021 and it's all gone away and there's no more talk about that so let's just take this off again I said I don't really need to take this off but I'll take it off and I'll show you a few things while well, it's off as well so that can all come off there you can see how this wire runs right round here this wire runs right round the side of where this actual flywheel was it goes right round the back of here and there's actually a little plastic clip which is there keeps it out of the way and you must keep this out of the way of everything it runs round the back underneath the inlet manifold and then back over the top I think it was we'll have a look, we'll check it when we put it back but if you've got a problem where you can't get spark usually 99% of the time it's because the kill switch doesn't work and I've only had one out of probably thousands now of these Briggs engines where the actual ignition coil itself has failed it's very rare, it's usually this wire that sits around the back of here so you can take that wire off there you can take that out of there as well and if you wanted to remove this cable from here as well all you've got to do is get some pliers like this and you can see there's a little plastic part here if you nip that together you can just push that back if you push that back through it comes out the way you do it is you collapse this plastic part if you like and I don't really need to do that if you grab hold of that you can normally just push it back through the other side of this but I don't need to take that off you can see how it is there you can see all the kill switch on the back and where the wire goes and everything like that so I'm going to move that out of the way but these cables do come off fairly easy if you just grab hold of this plastic part and actually pull it back through here that's all you need to do for that with all that lot removed I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually unbolt this actual uh, engine from this deck, this is a plastic deck, I don't know if I mentioned it's an IB or IBEA lawnmower it's um, quite an unusual thing this really, I think it's Italian anyway, um, I'm going to take that off, now you should really just use a normal socket with this but this actual impact here has actually got adjustable torque on so I can go slowly if I feel like this isn't going to do the job then what I'll do is I'll just do this with a normal um, spanner or a socket let's loosen that one off already I'll probably have to get underneath to do this as well let's just get that off there I was just hoping that nut come off over the top of there but I don't think it will before I actually uh, tip this up I'm just going to take the oil out of this I normally use my extractor I don't like normally doing this in the garage but I'm just going to tip this up this is the way you can do it if you haven't got an oil extractor you can just tip this like this make sure the piston's right to the top if you just tip this like this, you should be able to just catch all this oil as it comes out of here. And I might as well take that out before I do anything else really because I can get underneath this actual engine then and I can unbolt this and it needs to come out anyway. You can probably just see how black that is. I don't normally recommend doing this anyway because if the carb's on it can send fuel and oil all the wrong way but everything's off, the carb's off and everything else is like that. It's dark outside, it's kind of half past ten at night again and um, I obviously can't start this lawnmower up to warm this up a bit so I'm going to tip this over and get as much out as I can I'll put something in there to bung that hole up as well and then we'll take this engine off from underneath take the blade off as well and I'll give that a sharp enough so I've just grabbed a 14 mil spanner I need to hold the nut on the other side of here and actually just zip this off at the bottom here with this so if I hold that and slide that in there like that I 
that's one out like that. I would set the blade off first really but you can see I can get these parts out. There's a couple more of those to do. I want to set the blade off as well. I think I'll do that now actually. So I'll just spray a bit of WD-40 on these and I'm just going to wire brush off around it. It's fairly clean but I want to get as good a grip on that as I possibly can. And this is uh, very tight. don't actually think it's bent. I've got a nice even gap in the blade here between the sides of the deck. I think they're just the actual blade adapter or the blade boss. It's got some plastic parts missing off it. It's kind of deceptive. It looks like the crankshaft's a little bit bent but I don't think it is. I've kind of changed my mind on this. I do actually think that this has got a slightly bent crankshaft. If you watch the centre here, what I normally do is watch the centre and as you turn this round here, if you watch the actual bolt and the washer, watch how far around it moves. You see? Very difficult to tell. Well, keep your eye on the washer. It just seems to be not staying in the same place. But the gap here, you can see this is very close to the edge, it's like a, a centimetre away from the bottom of the cutting deck. This one is like a, an inch away, so I think it's slightly bent this crankshaft and I'm amazed that the actual keyway is in one piece at the top. Another sign of this being bent is I can't actually remove this blade bolt as well. So I'm just doing my best to film in this, I know people like to see this. Let me just film that ball right at the top of the screen there, on the camera, I'm trying to hold the camera really still on the bolt. See how it goes down? It's really difficult to film. Mm, not convinced. Looking at the washer going round, it looks bent, don't stay in the same place. So, he uses this regularly as well, so I'll have to give it the benefit of the doubt and just imagine that that's not quite right. But the pins are still through the blade, the actual woodruff key at the top of the crankshaft isn't bent. And we'll have to have a look in here, but this part here, this blade adapter here, is all smashed off. You see in there? That's a sign it's hit something. And I'm really struggling to get this actual blade bolt out here. So I've gone for this uh, Clark impact this is the whole reason I bought this when you get things that look like they're bent or they won't come off what normally happens with a blade like that if you can't get it off even with that Ryobi one which normally does pretty much everything is um, there is a problem normally something's bent or it's hit something at the very least and that's why I bought this I list the Ryobi and this Clark one in the description of all my videos so I get so many questions about them I'm going to put this tripod uh, in a better position, put this camera back on it and I'll try and zip this off and if this don't get it off then we're really in trouble. So let's just grab this. Again, I've got a proper impact socket on the end of this and again I always uh, like to look after myself so I'm going to put some safety glasses on. There's no adjustable speed on these, it's forward and reverse and that's all you get. So when you're doing this make sure you've not got your finger under there because if it spins you can still catch your you can still take the tip of your finger off, so you've got to be real careful. I still can't get the spin speed I need to remove this actual bolt from here. That's really unusual. It just looks very bent when I'm when I'm looking at that as well. So I'm really struggling to get that off, which is unusual. I've never had a problem taking one of these off before. And it does spin very easy. I think what I'll do as well is I will take this clamp off the handle that I put on earlier, and that should help the actual flywheel get grabbed by the brakes. That's maybe a mistake I've made. Maybe if it doesn't spin quite as easy. It'll come off, but of course that's not even in play. I think the problem that I've got here, the mistake that I've made, I always like to say this sort of thing is, I've taken the flywheel off before I've taken the blade off, and the problem with doing that is that I don't have the, the weight of the flywheel and I don't have the brake against the flywheel to hold it, and in turn holding that flywheel in position makes this blade easy to undo, because at the minute there's no resistance. So, I've made a mistake, I don't normally do it in that order, I don't normally take the flywheel off and leave it off and then take the blade off. 
and I think on this occasion because I've taken the flywheel off first and I can't use the brake against it or have the weight of the flywheel that's why I can't actually get this blade off so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the flywheel back on put the brake against the flywheel tip this back over and see if we can unbolt this so interesting anyway I can't pretend I did it on purpose because I didn't so let's put that back on and see if we can actually use the actual weight of that flywheel and the actual brake against it to give us enough resistance on this to actually be able to unbolt this blade and of course just thinking back to what I've done as well I've actually taken this part off here which is the actual brake which has got the kill switch attached so I can't actually break even though I've put the flywheel back on I can't use the brakes so I need to tip this back up I've got the flywheel back on I'll put this brake back on and then we'll try it again so really this is a bit uh, it's kind of amateur hour isn't it really but when you do things out of sequence like this just to strip things down it's amazing what you can learn and just how many things that um, you can sort of forget that you need such as the flywheel being on and it being braked just to have enough impact to get that off now I think I've been a bit unlucky because this has obviously uh, hit something it's a bit more difficult to get off than normal but it just goes to show you that if you strip things down in a different order and do something slightly different how many problems you can kind of cause for yourself so if you're stripping one of these down and you want to take everything off I'll suggest if you can tip the lawnmower on the side and remove the blade first before you do anything else that's probably the best way to do it so I've just dropped that flywheel back on I'm just going to put these couple of parts back in here like this you can see it still spins really freely as well another thing of course we've got is we've got the spark plug out which makes it spin a little bit easier we've got everything else off and the engine really just turns more freely than it would with all the parts on so let's get that the right way around I just need to put this on so I can use the brake really so the bigger one of these two goes at the back which was the wider one I think it was that one I'll put that in there like that so yeah but I like to um, I like to be honest in these videos you know people get things wrong it's, you know you, you learn as you go along don't you with these things nobody's perfect are they you know I can't film everything saying yeah this was brilliant and everything went according to plan because that would be, uh, well, you'd be lying wouldn't you really there's not much point in that so I've learned tonight that if I ever want to get the blade off I must make sure that the first thing I do is take the blade off before I strip any of the parts off because I've made this more difficult for myself by taking all these parts off you've not got the compression because the head's not on you've not got the brake on I've not got so many different parts on that will be actually just causing enough resistance stopping the blade spin as freely as it is and hopefully if I do this release that brake there release that clamp at the top you can see that's just got hold of that a bit and of course this all transfers down to the underside as well where the actual blades held on and with that resistance there that should hopefully just about give me enough with this impact to be able to remove this blade so let's try this again now there's a bit more resistance there I'm still not overconfident if I'm honest because I think this is bent and it never comes off well when it's bent so my fingers and there you go no camera tricks just honesty and I've got it off my fault my mistake I've uh, messed up basically again but hopefully uh, you won't do the same thing so that can come off you can see what a mess this is here so all the pins are nice though you see the pins on the bottom they aren't broken and I'd be amazed if the crankshaft was bent if those two pins were still there in the correct place they hadn't broken the actual keyways hadn't broken but the crankshaft was bent I'd be, I'd be amazed so let's take a bit of a closer look at this actual crankshaft right so I've got this camera propped up on a, a mallet I'm going to turn the flywheel and I'm going to get you guys to have a look and see if you think this is bent if it goes around in a kind of loop like this obviously it's bent so let me have a quick look at that from my side here maybe slightly bent not much though, not as much as it looks, obviously it's exaggerated with the blade on and I've just got the blade bolt to put that back in there I'm just trying to gauge how bent this is it does move around a little bit 
there's maybe just a lot of play inside here, I'm not sure. But it goes round and it isn't massively bent and I know this lawnmower runs as well. And I think inside here, this keyway, I think this is the design of it and the actual keyway sits on the blade adapter. I'm not sure if that's correct. I think it is. There's two cutouts at this side and a long one along the other side. I really need to look at this blade adapter and see how that works as well. We'll take the blade adapter off and let's have a look at the blade adapter. So this is a real mess. I'm just looking for a, an actual key where sometimes they sit in the actual crankshaft and sometimes they're built into these blade adapters. You can see these little notches at the far end there. And I'm just wondering if this side of it here that's smashed off actually is designed to have the keyway built into it. So I ain't going to mess about with this. I'm going to try and get a part for this. The thing you need to look at with this to get the right part is you need to measure the distance between these two pins. Although on this mower it's 65 millimeters, and I want to know the actual length of this as well. And I, I think I've measured that about 80 millimeters. So 65 between the pins and 80. And if you're never sure where to get them from. This is really why you need this service ticket which is luckily for me still on here. So I'm going to use the information I've got to buy a blade adapter. This is an IBEA lawnmower, Italian as it says there. Let's have a look here, the serial 98. It's got a type on IB424F, that could be useful. And it's a 420 on here, so I would imagine it's a 420, 42 centimetre cut. So I'm going to take photographs of that, and I'm going to take photographs of that, I'm going to go searching online for a part, making sure that it's 65 millimetres from the centre of each pin here, and 80 millimetres to the bottom. And I'm really interested to see if there's actually a keyway built into this or not, and I don't know if I'm going to struggle to get this part, but I really want to find exactly what it looks like when it's not snapped off like that as well. So obviously this has hit something, or just worn away. And the crankshaft does appear to be slightly bent. But amazingly, these pins all seem to be okay. And normally, I suppose you could argue that the woodruff key or the crankshaft key at the top of the crankshaft would normally, I guess, be okay, and the bottom one would normally be uh, missing. And I can't see one in the crankshaft at the bottom of this mower, so I can only imagine it was inside here, and as it's smashed off, the whole thing's gone. So let's try and find actual blade adapter for this lawnmower. Before I go completely mad, I've just undone these bolts, which is what we're doing before we took the blade off. I've undone those. I think there's just one here like that. I can get this engine off. I do need to disconnect this cable now. Move it out of the way. I've got this whole engine off, out of the way, and we can work on that and take a look at that on the bench. I showed the actual black plastic connector earlier that you need to squeeze and pull back through here. Just pull that back through there. Just basically squeeze it and pull it back through and I, I forgot to film it and that's like that. And you can just pull this actually off the bottom of here like this. This cable comes off and then you can get this whole engine off and out of the way should you want to. I didn't need to do that but I just wanted to take it off, film a few things and to be honest I'm glad I did because I've learned a few things there as well and I don't normally strip these down to this extent. So um good bit of fun really and a little bit more knowledge for myself and everybody watching so that's off I can put that on my bench we've got that off and out of the way and what I have on my bench is I have a hole in it as well see this hole here so I can always just drop things down there and it sits relatively flat on the bench and that sometimes comes in quite handy as well so I'm going to tidy this bench up tidy some tools up and we'll see what we can do next right I'm back you can probably tell it's uh next day and I've just been doing a bit of painting out here, made a bit of a mess tidying my garage up just a little bit because we're all still on this uh, horrible lockdown thing but I'm still working on this IB or IBEA lawnmower and it's a couple of days later now and there's a few things I want to talk to you about before I carry on with the video mainly that the biggest problem I've got with this is this actual blade adapter that's smashed now this was just sat on here and it only went down to there and as you can probably tell, it's not going to go back on. There wasn't even a keyway in here. There was the remainder of a tiny little bit of a keyway along there. So what I need to do 
is I need to, well first of all I need to find a part and I really can't find a part for this particular mower, this actual blade adapter. I've even emailed IBA or IBEA, still not sure what to call that, and asked them and they haven't got back to me. So for now, this is as far on as it was before, all I can do is uh, measure this, so that's around 10 centimetres there from the actual bottom of this engine to where this blade attaches. Now I've actually done quite a bit of work off camera and I just want to show you the problems that, that I have. The problem that I thought I had um, was that I didn't think that this actual lawnmower deck was height adjustable and I've just worked out that it is on this side. So I was a bit unlucky because they had the actual deck sort of sat like that and I didn't realise. But what I need to do is try and get a blade adapter for now until I get the correct part to basically sit as close to the length of that off the bottom of this engine like that there at 10 just under 10 centimeters and this is a really long blade adapter so what I've done until I can find the correct part is I've kind of um, played about with an old one I've got if you can see in here this is a bit of a bodge I can't lie but it's still got the pins on and it's still got something that goes through the blade here so I've kind of got on the grinder and made that so it kind of fits and I've made this hole in here very very slightly bigger not much just a little bit and these as well and what I'm going to attempt to do is get this on here although it's not the correct part and make it somewhere near just under 10 centimeters now the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to get this keyway up here and I'm going to put it in I was just about to do it and I thought well, I'll start filming again I'm going to put this keyway in this crankshaft here like this I'm going to, in a minute I'm going to knock that in with a, a rubber mallet and just make it nice and flat in there and what I want to do with this part is I want to slide it onto one of these actual sections now this one here you just about see there let me turn around into the light let's go outside you can probably just see down here hopefully you can this actual part here slides right down to the bottom this actual cutout goes down to the bottom but these parts here actually have a stop on the bottom now I'm not sure if you're supposed to f actually fit the actual keyway on the crankshaft into these parts but the only way I can make it long enough is to put the keyway on the crankshaft and try and push this blade adapter on into one of these holes and I don't want any uh, kickback on this or anything I don't really want the blade where it's not supposed to be so I'm going to use the next one along and I'm going to push this onto this actual crankshaft now there's a few tips I can share with you about doing this the first thing all, a lot of my subscribers like they'll love this get yourself some WD-40 and put it on this actual crankshaft and get yourself some wire wool like this and just go around it and clean everything off and when you do that what happens is if you're playing about with these actual blade adapters is you can try them a few times and when you get them on you can actually get them off again because it can be a real pain to get off and I'm going to show you how to get them off as well so if you're trying to mess about and maybe uh, swap a, an engine over onto another deck or vice versa whichever way you want to try and do it and get the length right you must clean these off make sure this, this shaft's really nice and clean and lubricated and then when you put these on and off and you're trying all these different ones you can get them off a little bit easier so I'm going to put this camera on the tripod I'm going to put this keyway in here and try and uh, attempt to show you what I'm talking about well, let's just uh, spray this up a little bit just to lubricate this a bit I want to show you exactly what I'm talking about really if I was to just use this blade adapter which isn't the correct adapter and just put this on you probably see here look at the gap it goes right up to the top of here and if I do that and put this actually back on the mower I'm kind of this much short from where the blade needs to be which is too far away although I do have some adjustment on the actual deck on the, the height near the wheels I want it to be very close to sort of 10 centimeters, somewhere within a centimeter ideally and what happens you get these on here and you find you can't get them off again to get these off again what you need to do is get yourself a puller get the actual bolt like this this one it's in too stuck on as you can see I did it with my fingers but if you bumped it on just to try and get it on properly and you couldn't get it off just get yourself the actual bolt in there and you get a two jaw puller like this you can see this here and this is only a really rubbish one I need to get myself a better one really um, I should get one of them Amazon wish lists really so people can you know buy me things I think channels seem to be doing that a lot now but I don't really like to ask for that but anyway um, if you get that there and actually put that against this bolt here 
you can see just how easily that that actual blade adapter sliding back up that crankshaft. Obviously, if it was more stuck than that, you'd have to use a, a socket on the end of there and tighten everything up. But that's good enough to get you out of trouble. And one thing, that, as I've said before, is critical is that you get this nice and clean first and just lubricate while you're trying these things. So what I want to do next is I want to find that little keyway and I'm going to put it in this crankshaft here. There it is. It's like a half moon keyway like that. Okay, Keith Moon. Who remembers Keith Moon? The who? Yeah, he was good, wasn't he? Such a shame, wasn't he? He, he was very young when he died, wasn't he? Was he about 27, 28, Keith Moon, when he died? I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to get this rubber mallet. This is a bit of a... A rough and ready way of doing it, but as I said, this lawnmower's for my dad, and he just cuts a bit of wasteland around the back of his house with it, I think, just to keep it tidy near where he lives, and other little bits like that. So I've got that in there, I've got the keyway in. I'll take that off there. And what I want to do is find this notch here. You can see that one there, that one goes straight down to the bottom, but the one next to it stops, it's got like a little stop just where my fingertip is, so that one there goes to the bottom. If I did that, it'd slide all the way up to the top of this shaft like I've just showed you. So my idea is to try and make it land in one of these other parts here. So I'm going to go for the one next to the long one that goes right down. That, that would be the way you'd normally do it. I'm going to take it one across from there. I'll just make sure I'm not actually getting it on that one. I want to make sure it's one across from there at least. I don't want it to go down the, the actual longest one, you see. So I'm going to go like that. And I'm going to push that on. And I'm going to just bump this up a little bit just to make sure it's as far as it can go. And at least that way, I've actually got this actual blade adapter on the crankshaft with a keyway holding it in position because this didn't even have a keyway. So, what I need to do next is just measure this here. If I measure that there, it's kind of nine and a half centimeters, so I'm only really half a centimeter from where I need to be. Not ideal, not perfect, but you can get more than half a centimetre's adjustment on this lawnmower because it's got height adjusters on it. Some lawnmowers don't have that, then you'd really be quite stuffed. And this is a, I can only describe it as a bodge job, but I've got the keyway on, I've got the actual adapter on, and I've still got some form of these shear pins on here. So what I had to do, to sharpen this blade up as well, is I had to make this hole slightly bigger and these ones just slightly bigger. I didn't want to go too far because I do want to get the, the correct part for this. And um, obviously I need to put the blade back on after I've actually uh, got the engine back on the mower. But just for now I just want to have a quick look and make sure that everything goes back like it should. So if that goes in there like that, what I want to do is tighten it up. And these pins, can you see how they're just about going on these holes here? You can see there's still just about enough there to hold them. I want to make sure that this all clamps together. And at least, if I can't get apart, for now, this has at least got a keyway through the crankshaft. It's got a blade adapter on that's not broken. And it's got some form of actual like shear pins on the side of this blade adapter. So, let's just make sure that's the right part, yeah. So I can get that on. And obviously I'll have to take this off again to put this actual... Uh, engine back on there. That just jumped then, you probably hear that just jumped. I think that's the keyway just finding its way to the bottom of that hole. So I want to make sure this is really tight but not stupidly tight. I don't want to break the blade adapter and that's more than tighter than it needs to be really. And as you can see I've still got these little pins through here like that and if I hold the crankshaft at the top it's all solid. The blade adapter is solid because it's actually got the keyway sat behind it so that's nice and solid even though it's in a slightly incorrect position and the blade itself attached to the blade adapter is solid and the bolt's gone in far enough because another problem you might have doing this is if the blade doesn't fit, if it doesn't screw in, if the thread isn't long enough or it's too long it's not quite as straightforward as you think it would be and I get a lot of questions asking me you know why don't you why don't you just put a Briggs engine on on this one? I had that um, that one with a broken piston a few videos ago, about ten videos ago now, and people kept saying, "Oh, just put a Briggs on it." Well, that's all right, but then you've got all the trouble of making sure that you've got the right blade adapter, you've got to measure the length of the crankshaft, and you've got to get the blade to fit at the bottom of the mower, which can be a bit of a pain. 
but I've managed to work out a way of doing that. So now I've got my blade adapter fastened onto this crankshaft. I've got the keyway in and I've got the blade tightly fastened on to this blade adapter. And if I measure that now, let's just have a look at that now. That's, uh, let me just turn it over so you can see a little bit. Yeah, we're nine, about nine and a half centimetres. So we're within half a centimetre of where we need to be. So I'm happy with that. I have done a bit of that off camera because it's been a bit of a faff, if I'm honest. And I do want to get the correct part. So if anybody's got a blade adapter for an IBF 420 without a self-drive on, this has actually got the, uh, the thing for the self-drive, so it's for a different blade adapter. I'm looking for one of these, an IBEA blade adapter for this actual lawnmower that's like that. So it doesn't have the drive thing around for the pulley. If you've got one of those, the pins are 65mm, I think they were from centre to centre. If you've got one of those for my dad to have, so I can swap it over, please let me know and I'll probably buy that off you to be honest. So I don't like not using the right part. Yeah, 65. 65 it is, so that's 65 and the length of this is actually uh, around 80 as well. So 6.5 centimetres by 8 centimetres. If you've got one of those, please let me know in the comments section and I'll happily transfer some money via PayPal for that for you. So that's where I've been at with that. Now we've got that done, I'm going to take that blade off. Let's take a look at some other little things on this actual uh, engine as well. And I mentioned a while ago in the video now that this head gasket is a bit of a mess. So I'm going to take this all off here. All these little bits, you can see how they just fall off here. I'm going to take all that off and clean all that off there. I'm going to take this off as well. I've ordered one of these. So let's just try and take that off. I'll try and keep it in sort of one piece just in case it doesn't arrive. So it's really quite old that and very brittle. And while I've got this off, I think I'll just put him a new one on there. So let's just turn that off. You can see there. And the way you want to actually look for these, just check, if you ever buy one of these, just check how many holes it's got in, hold it up to the picture on the internet, it sounds really s simple this, and make sure it's got the right amount of holes in, and all these little shapes are the same, because some of these do vary on the different Briggs engines as well, so make sure you check before you buy one of these, but that's not in great order, I've seen much worse, and it probably wasn't too much of a problem, but I think I paid about £3, and while I'm here, and I'm filming my video, I might as well show people how to do this, so I'm going to take all this mess off here, I'm just going to make sure this actual piston's at the top as well, so I'm not getting anything down there like that. Leave that at the top. I'm just going to spend a little bit of time go around here. Just get all this mess off here for when the new one arrives. Make sure it's nice and clean, then I can put my new one on as well. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time scraping all that off. I'm actually going to clean all this off in here and get all this carbon off from the inside of here as well, so this isn't all on the valves. I'll probably just clean up all the dirt from around the valves as well. And that's what you need to do really, that's all you need to do to actually just replace the head gasket on a Briggs mower like this. And to do that, I just normally get a scraper like that as I've said and go on there and I just get a little bit of wire wool as well. And just, just give everything a really good clean off, that's all you need to do. No special way of doing it really, just make sure it's clean. Wire wool's quite good for it, it just lightly scratches everything. Just let, let's you have a nice clean finish there as well. You can feel just how smooth it is at the end as well. And we'll just clean off all this dirt from around these valves as well. It only takes five minutes really. It's great then because you've got your new one when it comes and you can just kind of put it straight back on. I'll just do the same with this as well. Just give this a really good clean off in here with this as well. Make sure everything's clean and tidy. It really is that simple to do. So there we go. I've just given that a clean up. Not 100% perfect but you can see most of this black which was built up in here is gone and this is nice and clean as well I'm just going to spend five minutes just actually cleaning this block off as well and then we'll have a look in a few parts and I must remember under here as I mentioned it earlier my mate Pete Pete Froud always says he drains his mouse through this in fact let's do it now I think he said he undoes that to, to drain them out I don't think I've ever done that so if I've got a part no, um, use for that then Pete. I know Pete watches all my videos so um, I'm not really sure how you're getting in there Pete if I'm honest. Let me see what else I've got to get in there with. Must have a, a right tool, I don't have something that's square like that so I'm not sure how you get in there mate. Um, what else have I got? Not a lot, let me have a look and I'll come back. Right the only thing I can find is this uh, extender that goes on my socket. This has got, like, got a square end on here. Um, let's put that in there. This obviously isn't the right tool either. That opens. 
Right, okay. So I presume, like Pete said, this is a like a drain bolt. People can use these to drain the oil, so I better be careful that no more comes out of this. I have actually drained all this out earlier in the video. So if you're finding this video and you've sort of gone halfway through it, just, just skip over me boring you. And um yeah. Well done mate. I don't know how you do that when it's still on the mower. You just normally tip it up Pete and then let it drip out into this actual tub while you're underneath it or do you just set the engine off? Anyway, it does uh, exactly what you said it was Pete and it uh, will certainly get all the oil out right from the bottom of the, uh, the thing as well. That's getting obviously more out than I could have got out tipping it over. So it's a complete drain out isn't it? So that's one way of uh, taking the oil out and it's probably, if you can get to it, probably is the best way Pete because you're getting absolutely everything out that way aren't you? You're not missing anything. So I'm going to take that and leave that out here. Yeah? Drain everything out of there and when we fill this back up it really will be nice and clean. So yeah there's a drain plug on this uh, Briggs engine at the bottom there. Right so that's completely bone dry, that's a good tip. If you haven't um, ever seen Pete on the comments, Pete's got his own channel as well. He's always, uh, well he's always been helped from right from day one as Pete for out on here so leave him a, a thumbs up if he leaves a comment and say hello to Pete. So I'll put that back in, just move that in my safe. Um, and tighten that back up a bit. Yeah I've never done that, all the things I've done with these mowers, I've never actually taken that actual drain ball out of there. I'll put that back in there, I'll just put a little bit of oil on the threads before I put that back in. I'll just put that back in there. And that's that. I'm going to strip this down so far, I'll just show you, if you want me to replace the actual valves in this mower you probably have to grind them and everything and get them to the right clearance but there actually is somewhere to go to get in to do that. You can take this little, what I like to call a trap door off here, I think it looks like a trap door. You take this, uh, this part off there, I'll just lay that down there. Take this off here. Normally a little bit of oil drops out of there while I've got hold of this. So, take that off the bottom of there. And then this whole little door just lifts off here. You can see how the whole thing moves out the way. A little bit of oil in the bottom of here. And if you get yourself a, a spring compressor, Briggs actually sell a spring compressor, I've got one somewhere. You put the spring compressor in here, you can actually nip these springs up, just get hold of them and tighten them. And you can actually pull these actual valve um, stems out of here. So if I rotate the piston from underneath you can see how they go and the distance, the travel, you can see everything like that in there and that's basically what's in there so I get a lot of questions from people going, oh, how do you take the valves out? Basically you just take that door off there, grab hold of the springs and you can pull these actual valves right out from the front here. Now, it's a long time since I've done any of these but I did actually take the valves out once on a video ages ago, one of the first ones I did probably, and I managed to grind the end off and adjust the clearance. I'm just looking in here and where I turn it, these valve stems actually go further in this engine. So I'm wondering, I think this, I'm right in saying this lawnmower, uh, this lawnmower, this engine is four horsepower, not three and a half. So I think it's slightly different, but in all honesty, nobody really takes these valves out and grinds the seats in here and gets them all set anymore. These engines last forever anyway, to be honest. They're so well built and so hard wearing that um, you're not really designed to be set. The only way you can do it is by grinding it. That's the, the, the advantage of the overhead valve lawnmowers is you can adjust the actual setting of the valves at the end and make the clearance correct. On this it's kind of um, just as it is, just as you find it. You shouldn't really have to adjust it or anything like that. But that's where they are and if you wanted to, you just grab hold of the springs and if you just grab them and pull it towards you, there's like a little catch, like a disc here. You can take them off, you can actually pull them out from the front. So that's how you get those out of there. I was just going to put this back together and this is uh, something I always wonder about and I'll ask. I, I don't actually know what that does. I've no idea. I know this has got like a, like a gasket around the side of it. But I don't actually know what this bit does. I'm not sure what that is. So leave me a comment because I'm always keen to learn new things as well. I probably should know by now. I don't know what that is in there. I know it's some sort of, uh, probably some sort of breather. But I don't actually know what, what its uh, intended purpose is or what it's called. So leave me a comment in the comment section if you know what this, this uh, traffic light's called. As I said earlier, if you've got a lawnmower with no spark, 
normally it's this wire, it's only really thin this wire that runs right round. This runs round here to this kill switch under here. You can actually take this out, it pulls right under this bit here. And if you bend the end of it there, you can actually get hold of that there. And you can actually press that little clip down there. See how this little clip? If you press that down, like that, this wire actually pulls out of there. You can get the whole wire out, you can see how the whole thing's out now. You can actually swap this wire over, so if you've got a lawnmower that don't have any spark, I would suggest doing that before you replace the whole ignition coil, because normally it's just this little wire. So I'm going to put that back in there like that, make sure that's connected up. And this happens a lot of the time, the wire gets broken, because this gets rerouted back around here when th things have been apart and people have taken them apart. And they don't use things such as this little clip here that keeps it out of the way. And what happens is when you get the actual recoil and you put it back on over the top, a lot of the times it gets clamped and it starts to cut into this wire here and I've seen a lot of them that are kind of broken off like that. So before you replace the ignition coil, I really suggest um, trying to replace this wire as well. So I think what we'll do now is we'll start building this back up. There's certain things I can't do, like the head gasket and stuff, but um, what I like to do when I'm putting stuff back is I just like to um, basically go around stuff just to sort of clean it along as I'm going along and just put stuff back in. So I want to put this back in first here. This little breather that goes across here, we'll just clean that off, give that a clean as we go. And I think this normally goes underneath. The wire there for the actual ignition coil normally goes underneath there. I'm going to push that to the end of there. Be careful, make sure it's not trapped as well. We'll put this part back in first. Put the flywheel back on, we'll put the ignition coil back on. I'll probably just bolt the head on for now as well. Um, just lightly, just to get the control arm on. I'll show you how to do it. Show you how to set this ignition coil as well. So, it's going to be quite a long video really, but we're all stuck indoors at the minute. Due to uh, COVID-19 and we're not supposed to be going out and killing each other. Which is the most horrendous thing ever, really. You know, when you can't, you know, see people, especially family members as well. Um, there's been some absolute horror news stories as well in all the countries, which is, you know, really, really sad for everybody, isn't it? So, as I say, when I film these videos now and I'm kind of stuck at home and I know I can't go out, it's a lot different to choosing to come out here and uh, and do it, really. So, just hope that in a few years, in fact, do me a favour, if you're watching this, whenever it is, whenever this stupid coronavirus thing's done one, whenever it's gone away, just leave me a comment in the, in the, uh, in the comments section, just, you know, let's just remind each other how, what it was like and how, how lucky we are to be able to get out and do exactly what we want to do on a daily basis. Leave me a comment, I'd really appreciate that. So, where have I put that part, I've just cleaned out yeah, it's in my hand. So let's put that back on there. This is the actual inlet manifold there, and that just goes across there. I'm going to move this wire, just this side of it here. You can see, let's just zoom in a bit so you can see a little bit better. There you go. How's that look? Everyone's using Zoom at the minute, aren't they? It's this thing online where you can chat to each other, on, you know, via your computer and stuff. I suppose it's quite a good thing, really. I've not tried it, but I kind of like uh, to film my videos and put them online, and that's fine. I don't really want to be having a conversation with someone via you know, video messaging or anything like that, a kind of uh, volume of privacy. Um, and you can, the thing is about YouTube is you can do this on your own terms as well, you know, you can film these videos privately, you can edit them how you want, put them on YouTube, and people can find them and watch them, or you can go live, or do whatever you want nowadays, so, you, you know, if you haven't got a YouTube channel and you're looking to start one, you don't have to do all this live stuff. Some people like it, some people... Uh, I like to have a chat via the internet and that's great, I've seen a lot of them, a lot of good ones, but uh, it's becoming more popular as people can't get out. It's, I just don't want it to become the future, you know, where people don't go out and meet up and do stuff because they can do it at home. I think that would be a real shame, but for now, it's uh, certainly helping a lot of people get through this, this uh, awkward period. So that's back on there and that's tight. Don't forget that gasket needs to be good underneath there, which it was. I've checked all that before I put that back on. We've got that back on, so I think what I'll do next, try and get this in the right order, not like when I took it apart, is I'll uh, put the flywheel back on here as well and find that, which is there. And I'll just pause my camera a minute while I find the actual key there. Uh, it's uh, somewhere in this tub, in fact, I've found it, look, so it can all stay together. How about that? And this is why it's really handy having a hole in your bench because you can just turn 
the crankshaft from underneath. You can slide that in there, look. Just put that down there. Take that off. I'm going to line this hole up here. See this little hole here lines up with this keyway here. And drop that on there like that. See if I can move the brake out of the way. A little bit of the brake on the back here, because I've taken all the cable off, is just in my way a little bit, so I'm going to move that out of the way a little bit. Let's just find a way of doing that. I'll move that with my thumb there like that. I'm going to put that screwdriver in there, it shouldn't go back as far. So that should go there. That should drop on there. Like that, and she has. Pull that back out. It wasn't really doing a rain lot to be fair. But I've got that back on, the brakes on there. We've got that exactly where we want it. And this is probably going to be easier to tighten up when it's actually back on the mower as well. So we've got that in position. The reason I want that there is I want to show you how to set this ignition coil up. So setting these ignition coils is pretty straightforward really. Obviously you need to have this flywheel in place. But what you need to do is find a part that's not like that, that's not magnetic. See, you can feel where the magnets are. As I get to here, I can see there's no magnets. And this is the part that to start with you want at the front. So I'm going to put that round here where this coil normally fits. And you can see no magnets. The magnets are actually wherever they are around the side. So there's nothing magnetic there. This is the coil. This has got the air vein on as well. This, this is uh, actually got an air vein on it. It doesn't have the... Uh, actual governor arm that runs underneath it like some mowers do, the SV150 for example work in a different way but this is like a governor flap assembly or an air vane so this has got your, your little bolt through here there's one at the other side and because you've got the magnets out of the way all you really need to do is just drop this on and just lightly fasten these parts here making sure that that air vane is stuck over there of course and you just get these on and we'll just start to tighten those up and there's an easy way really to set these set these up and before you put it all together properly make sure you connect this actual electrical connector underneath and have a real good look at the wire that wire does go under this little breather that goes through here and it goes around there in fact I'll show you because this is what a lot of people get wrong and they can't find out eventually they can't get any spark so that the actual spade connector under there as you can see runs underneath over the top of these cooling fins next to this inlet manifold here and it wants to run over there so it goes it does go under there over there in this catch here and round here around the side and then it goes back around in here underneath this bit round here into the kill switch as well so actually comes up through this little hole here into this kill switch so that's what you need to do you get this in position I'm going to show you uh, kind of the quickest way to set it up really so you can see how loose that is there you can just actually see all this is uh, just kind of hanging around what I get is I, I get these spark plugs which are available at the website at repairalmostforprofit.com These are NGKs, B2LMs, I sell these all the time on the website and I use these for all the mowers, I buy them in boxes of 10 and what I do is I rip off the actual cover and I use this cover which is slightly too thick, you should use a playing card thickness really and I just put that in the gap between the flywheel there like that and this actual uh, ignition coil here, so set between the two is this piece of card. I'm going to get my socket here, I can't think of a word then, and then just put it against it like that and just tighten this up slightly, just so that you know, nearly tight. Put that in, and what you're doing is I'm pushing my thumb against here so I can push it against the flywheel. So don't tighten these right up, but get them a good way down like that. And then just back them off, say, let's say we'll back them off a turn like that. What I'll normally do next is I turn the flywheel until it goes to the point where the magnets do actually grab hold of this here. So if I turn there, see how it all moved? The magnets have actually got hold through the card, got hold of the ignition coil. And by doing that, you're actually setting an even gap between the ignition coil and the flywheel. So once you've got it in that position with the card in there like that, and it's all even around here, what you need to do just get yourself your socket now and tighten it up and you can't be wrong as long as you've got it pushed against this side like that and you've got the card in that gap you're going to set an even gap between ignition coil and flywheel which is exactly what you want say a playing, a playing card thickness is normally the right thickness but if I wind this round now eventually this card will pop out as well I can just take it out 
just grab hold of that a bit, so it's a little bit faffy, like that, and turn it round a little bit. What you've got then, in this little bit here, is you've got a really even gap between the flywheel and the, the ignition coil in here. See that? That tiny gap between this ignition coil and the flywheel? And that's all you need to do. That's the perfect distance, really, between both sides of this and the flywheel. So, just to recap that, make sure you've not got the magnets to the front here, so you can get your card in. It's not actually grabbing hold of it straight away. Put the card in first, get it all lined up, spin the flywheel till the magnets grab it through the card in the right position, tighten everything up, remove the card. And that's how simple it is to set the flywheel on one of these Briggs mowers. It's the same on all of these, that's all you need to do. So get yourself a nice box of spark plugs and um, keep hold of the actual uh, cover off it. And you can use that for setting these ignition coils. And even though I've not got a head gasket on, I want to show you something about actually refitting this actual uh, head gasket on. I'll just move that to the front, so the piston's at the front. This is something I always used to get wrong. When you put this on here and you get all your bolts through here, what, what I've seen it on a lot of videos, a lot of people do it, is get this all in line like this, and you can put them all in, but don't put the top three in, because you've got this actual control arm to put on, and the bolts actually go through the control arm, through the engine head, and then into the engine. So when you're putting it back together, put everything else back in, put these last three in last, don't tighten any of them up at the beginning, just put them in finger tight like I'm going to do now. That way you know you've got everything lined up. And I'll show this again, I'll probably refilm a video showing how to actually uh, replace a head gasket on these big mowers. I'll probably do that as a separate video. Uh, get all these bolts in here, like this. When you get to this point, which is what I'm talking about, you need to get this part here. And these bolts actually go through this. And uh, I always forget to do this, even nowadays. If I ever take one of these off to do a head gasket, I always bolt it back together and then forget. So we'll get all those back in now. I'm not going to tighten all these up just for now. I'll probably just tighten these top three up because I've got to take these off again, of course, to do this head gasket. So for now, I'm going to tighten the top three up just so I've got all these springs and governor springs in position and I can show you how to hook this all back together when the carb's serviced. So once you've got that control bar back on, the control arm, should I say, you get this here. If you've got your springs, your governor springs, there's two that attach here. I've done videos on this before. If you look on the channel, just take Moa Man Governor Springs in on YouTube, you'll find it. This hooked edge with the biggest hook goes into this actual air vein here, this Governor flap assembly here, and the whole thing goes about. And that's how we connect that up with the control arms on here. Everything's on here. We haven't got this throttle on here. And there's something I always do. I'll show this as well. What I normally do with these mowers is I get this part here, this little one here. And I bend, just bend this tab down like that. So basically the whole thing, like that, doesn't really move. And then you've kind of got a set point where your springs will go to. So, I don't know why that one's on there. That shouldn't be on there, that's in the wrong place. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to hook that onto here, because that's actually in the wrong position. So I don't know why that one was there. I noticed it when I pulled it. That one actually wants to hook on here. So, you get the whole thing moving about like that. And then the bottom of it, when we get started with the carburetor, this actual linkage here hooks back onto the little triangular part on the carburetor as well. So you've got your two governor springs on. I always move that like that, because then it can't move, it'll run at the same speed. And you don't need any adjustment on it, which is the whole reason I took the throttle off. So that's a set speed now, and I can adjust that slightly by bending this tab forward and lengthening this spring a little bit if I want to. So we'll start off with it somewhere near the middle for when we get this back together. I'm just going to zip, just put these parts on, I'm just going to zip this top nut back up on this flywheel as well. That's that. It's just one job less to do. That's that out of the way. So I'm just tidying up a little bit and in a minute I'm going to show you exactly how to service this carburetor. And this carburetor is 90% of the problem on any Briggs engine that's revving up and down. Nothing to do with the governor springs, which everybody replaces. 90% of the time it's always to do with the diaphragm and gasket that's sat here in between this actual carburetor and this petrol tank. So the first thing I'm going to do before I take anything off this actual carb or this tank is I'm just going to clean all this dirt off the back of it and right round it so I'm not getting any, any dirt from the outside off the back of the carb or the tank going inside the carb when I do take it off. So I'm just going to spray this up, I'm going to take it outside I'm just going to clean all the dirt off this 
There's an air compressor. If you haven't got one, you can use an old paintbrush and some old fuel or whatever you need to use. I'm going to clean it all off so I know there's no dirt going to be taken off the outside and end up on the inside of this car. So this is a crucial part really. This is the thing that the one thing you really want to do if you've got a lawnmower that's hunting, surging, revving up and down, etc. Any of those things, and you've messed about with the governor springs like loads of people do. This is the part of the lawnmower that causes all the problems, really, at least 90% of the problems. So what you need to do is you need to replace a diaphragm and gasket set, which is what I'm showing you how to do right now in this carburetor. And um, you can buy these sets on the website at Repair or Most for Profit. And I only sell genuine ones on there as well. Don't buy aftermarket ones anymore. I've seen videos online where they literally last five seconds before the engine goes wrong. Spend an extra couple of pound on the genuine Briggs gaskets rather than another sort of 250-300 pound on a new lawnmower. It's definitely worth the price. So take a look on the website at repairlawnmowersforprofit.com and you'll find everything you need on there. I don't mess about with any of the aftermarket ones anymore, I've only got genuine ones. So there are three, five screws in there and this whole thing lifts off like this. You can see this whole thing moves out of the way and that's the cab separated completely. If you tip this over now, all these little screws can come out and the problem with these is this little wrinkled part in here. This little bit here, it's like a balloon, you can see how it's all out of shape now, it should be kind of flat, it's like all shriveled and bubbled up, that's what you don't want to see. Now there's two parts to this, there's a diaphragm and a gasket, if you pull this tube off by the way, this tube actually does come off, you just have to be a bit oh, persuasive with it, this actual filter comes off as well, twist that off to try and keep it in a good shape otherwise you can't get that back on. This part here is a diaphragm and a gasket and when you buy the set it comes with both, so, you take that off there and you'll see here how wrinkled up that is. You can see in there, can't you? Just how, like the big indentation in it and just how bubbled up it is. This is what transfers the fuel from the car and the tank into the engine and actually makes this thing run. So, this comes apart. You'll uh, hopefully be able to see in a minute. There's two parts to this. There's a, a thicker part and a thinner part. One is a diaphragm, which is the thinner part, and the gasket, which is the thicker part. So, you can take those two bits apart, and the reason I'm showing you that is because when I put one back on in a minute, um, I want you to just understand that there's two parts. Another crucial point to this is, this spring can fly for miles. So just take that off, put that somewhere really safe, and I mean like somewhere magnetic. This inside here is the main jet, I don't normally take this out on this mower because you can bend the plastic and break things taking it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of this carb spray here. I'm going to put it through all the holes I can find right in these parts here, all around the whole thing. Then I'm going to blow it out with the air compressor. We're going to fit a new diaphragm and gasket on here, put this back on and this should solve any running problems that you'll have on your lawnmower. So I'm just going to spray in all these little holes here. You can see in all these little bits and down here. You want to get in everywhere you can you just clean the whole thing out right from the top as well there's tiny little holes in here you want to make sure you get everything completely clean any blockages and it won't run properly at all so take your time doing this make sure you get in all the little holes see there's one there look get everything cleaned out and you see how it's coming out the other part once you squirt in one part it comes out the other so I'll clean all that out I'm going to clean all that off the air compressor Give this a clean with carb spray and it just removes any old stale fuel. Do the same with this as well on the filter tip on the end of here. Put this through from the other side. You should see it come out of there like that. And if you look, once this is dry through that end there, you should be able to see daylight through the other side through the filter so you know you've got no blockage. So we'll take that off. I'm going to take a look at this tank as well. I'm just going to clean out a few bits of fuel inside here. There's always a couple of bits in here that I clean out. You must be real careful doing this because if you're going to use an air compressor or something like that you want to be careful not to splash fuel back into your eyes. So, but there's one thing I really like to clean out and that's this part in here. You see this is like a cross section, how black it is there. All that dirt that's built up. I always make sure that that's clean. And if you are going to do that and you are going to use an airline, make sure you cover up any of these other parts as well so you're not getting any dirt anywhere near you and put some safety glasses on as well.
can see the advantage of having an air compressor that, that now is completely clean. So that's off. I'm going to get myself a nice clean bit of cloth in a minute, but for now I'm just going to dry all that off, put that to one side. That's everything I need to do with that. And I'm going to blow out all these holes on this carb as well, but there's one thing I like to hold on to. There's a couple of like ball bearings in here. You see in the side of this, and if you if you blow compressed air through this too hard, you can force these out. So I'm going to go around the whole thing and just blast this out. I'll do it off camera, otherwise it's quite deafening on the video. So that's all that cab spray through it. It's been cleaned out with the air compressor and it's uh, pretty much bone dry now. So the next thing I want to do, put this actual part back in here. And just grab this. Here. You don't have to take that off by the way, but I just like to take it off because I know it comes off. If you press this it should click, like that. And then you've got this other filter which you should have sprayed some carb spray on as well. And if you twist that again lightly that should go back on. That might look quite easy but if you make it into a kind of square by pinching it to take it off it can be a, a bit more difficult. So next thing we're going to do is fit the diaphragm and gasket and we do that by actually placing it down on this petrol tank. So the correct order for this is the diaphragm first. If there's two parts with these you get two bits, a thicker one which is a gasket and a thinner one which is a diaphragm. So we'll get that and we'll lie it over the holes like this. I must just remember to do something. The spring I said not to lose. Make sure we put that spring back on there. I took that off for the video but I don't always take that off to be honest. So let's just put that spring back on there. If you twist that as well very carefully that's the easiest way to get that back on. So we've got the diaphragm which is the thinnest part on there. I'm going to get the gasket which is the thicker part. We're going to put that over the top. Now the key to getting this right, and you can probably see there, this is an older gasket I've got actually, it's not actually a, a genuine one before anyone points it out. But um, I had some from a company that were really good years ago and I've just found it. But you can see how flat that is there. You see, there's no ridges in it, no bubbles in it. Even if you buy some of the aftermarket ones, this part, this diaphragm is so thin, it bubbles up in no time at all. So buy genuine ones. This is kind of uh, one of the last ones I've bought from an aftermarket one. I think it's been in my drawer a few years. That. In fact, I found a few more, so and I know these ones are alright. But it's really not worth going on diaphragm safari on ebay and trying to save yourself 50p really it's just not worth it so the diaphragm goes on first the thinner part then the gasket on top and then I'll just make sure I've got all the dirt off that what I normally do is hold it all together like that get all everything lined up so when you're looking down from the top you can see all the screw holes and you can just kind of get hold of everything put that back through the hole everything moves about a bit but what happens is when you get to this point is you want to get down at eye level with it and then you can see the spring actually going down and making sure the spring goes down nice and flat like that and then if everything isn't lined up from the top you can look down from the top here if you look with your eyes just straight down these holes here like this you can see make sure the diaphragm the gasket and the carb is nicely lined up and then we'll just put one of these back in this corner here and just start that and I can't emphasise enough how important it is to do these working across from each other and making sure that all these go in these holes nice and evenly without anything actually splitting this brand new diaphragm. Everything must be really lined up with all the screws in place before you actually tighten these screws up. So get all five or six of them in, how many, however many there was, five I think there are, like that. I've got all five in, make sure you're happy with everything and you can start to knit these up. Just go sort of a, in a diagonal pattern if you can, across like this. And don't over tighten them at first, just tighten them like this. Once you've got to that point you can kind of just go around and tighten these right up like that. And even then I still, you know, it's just a good habit really to kind of work across isn't it. So I'll show you another thing in a second on the back of this car, which is something that's crucial as well to keep your lawnmower running correctly. It's going to be a long video this, isn't it? I didn't intend it to be this long, but you know, it's uh, something for me to film and I enjoy filming these. So if you've not subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. It's free and you'll get updated with all the uh, future videos I release if you tick the bell. So that goes back down like that. Another thing to check. This happy smiley face here, 
hello, see you around here, it's like a smile. That can sometimes go like that, and if it gets to that point you don't know that it's incorrect, you're in trouble. So make sure that this little plastic notch here is actually there, and this little triangular part, the smiley face, is smiling at you from there. On the back of the car, there's two what I call inlet washers, they're actually seals, inlet seals and a retainer. There's a black one and a white one. Let me just find something to take it out with. I'll show you. If you don't get these back on the mower properly, or the missing or anything like that, you'll have an air leak. I need to do a better job of cleaning that off in there as well. So you must make sure that these are nice and clean and tidy in here and sealed properly. Because they push onto the actual inlet manifold that I showed you earlier. If you remember I showed you the inlet manifold that had a, a broken gasket slightly inside and I put that back on a, a few uh, minutes ago. These inlets slide onto that inlet manifold and form a, an airtight seal. And if you don't have an airtight seal, obviously you'll have an air leak. If you have an air leak you'll have a lawnmower that doesn't run properly. It probably surges and revs up and down. But the black one goes in there to the furthest point like that, like you can see. And then this white one is like a retainer. This is actually uh, hard as well, this one isn't flexible, the black one is. That pushes in like that, and then you've got your air filter gasket, which needs a little bit of a clean. I'll do that a bit better in a second. That just sits back on the top of the carb, and that's the whole thing serviced. But make sure you use genuine diaphragm and gaskets, and you are able to buy them at my website, repairlawmostforprofit.com. You'll find there's a section on there. I think there's an article online called um, Where Can I Buy Genuine Diaphragm and Gasket Sets for Briggs and Stratton and you'll find my article and videos through that. So that's the whole carb service, it's as simple as that. And believe me, this is, as I've said loads of times already, 90% of the problems you'll have with a lawnmower revving up and down, not starting or stalling or running for a minute and stopping are always due on this type of lawnmower down to this carburetor and particularly due to the diaphragm and gasket and nothing to do normally with the springs that attach to it people make that uh, mistake a lot so that's it, how simple it is to service that up that's the whole thing done, we can bolt that back on this lawnmower so the next trick to getting this back together is making sure you've got these springs connected up and everything's moving about, you can see how everything moves around in a, like a tug of war type fashion I always think it's like a tug of war you can see how the springs are pulling against each other this connector here at the bottom this simply hooks into your smiley face here. See your little smiley face I was talking about, your triangle there? That basically hooks into there and to get this whole thing back on you can just hook that into there like that and this is where this actual inlet seal, the black and white seal, pushes on to this inlet manifold which is here. So I'm going to get that and I'm push it really evenly onto there like that. And what you need to do is grab yourself a bolt while you're there, just keep it all in position, put yourself your bolt back through here, which is through the actual tank here, and I've just added that spacer there, Kevin spacer, that's a joke, it's not really called Kevin, I was just thinking of Kevin Spacey, I don't know really if we should be talking about him, but uh, anyway, I'm getting, off, I'm getting off topic, it's like trial by documentary nowadays isn't it, you know, you get, you know, acquitted in a court of law and then judged by documentary, Ridiculous really. Anyway, I was referring to someone else. But that goes in there, like that. On the front here, you just attach a little 10 mil bolt. There's one there that my dad had in it, which is wrong. But it's probably been in it since uh, I think I sold him it, to be honest. And that whole thing's back together. Once you tighten these two parts up, that's back together. And what you need to just check is that all these springs and your smiley face moves around as it should, you don't want anything catching and what I was referring to earlier is if this smiley happy triangle face goes over here like this, you'll find that nothing really moves, it doesn't move about and I see that a lot so make sure that you've got your, your triangular part, I've no idea what it's called over there so it's kind of smiling at you and the whole thing moves about exactly as it should I'm going to find the correct bolt to put through there and I'm going to tighten that one back up as well you find once you start repairing these you'll end up with a massive a selection of stuff you've taken off and you'll never really be short of uh, too many bits here so I'm going to find a little bolt that goes through here as well so that was harder than I thought actually I went through there and I couldn't find one believe it or not so let's take that out let's just disregard that 
I think these are 10 mil that's the, the size of it and that's the beauty of this engine this is just two bolts you can get the whole carbon tank off and everything out of the way so that goes in there I'm going to tighten these other parts up and that's the whole thing back on you must make sure that if this exists anymore the space actually fits between this carbon tank and actually the engine there just put that on first and put the bolt back through so we'll just tighten that up now Side a little bit. It's always funny when you're filming because I'm always conscious of my arm or my bald head <laughs> getting in the way and I'm kind of always tightening things up. It looks like I'm a bit cat handed I think they call it. So just tighten that up. I'm not going to go too far with that. This is a lot easier when the actual engine's bolted onto the actual lawnmower by the way. Another tip to getting this other bolt through here is if you take the petrol cap off you can actually just get your spanner in or your socket and get in a little bit easier. So, just get in here and take this one off. Make sure this is really nice and tight by the way because you want to make sure that these inlets are squashed onto this manifold nice and tightly and you're not going to have an air leak. So make sure you get it pretty tight there like that. I always tighten that up and I normally do this one afterwards because this is only to keep the height correct really. I see a lot of people not bothering with this but you, you want your fuel tank at the right height. It's only two seconds really to tighten it up so I tighten that up as well. Just put this back on. It's really full of fuel is that so I'll just put this tank this back on here. And that's that. Everything's back on there. And we've got this whole carbon tank serviced back on here. Something else I nearly always forget. This breather here that goes on there and it just hooks over here. It's a little bit fiddly to do. It's actually easier to do when you've not bolted the whole thing together, but I've done it that many times. It doesn't really matter. So that's all back together. The, the key to this really, making sure that you get your carb sat on this inlet manifold nice and square and tight and sealed on, making sure the air vein moves and all the springs and your smiley face is in the right place. Just making sure everything's back together tight and the carb's nice and serviced. Got this spacer in here and pretty much we've got everything back together and we're just about ready really to bolt this actual engine back on the mower deck and try this blade underneath it. For any of these little Briggs 3.5 or 4 horsepower engine the correct lawn mower spark plug is these uh, B2 LM ones. I've got loads of these. I use these all the time. I never use anything else. I've we'll never had one fail and as I say on, on hundreds, I think I've got nearly 300 videos now, I've probably said it on nearly every one. Don't buy cheap ones from B&Q because they don't work. They're really, really bad. And the amount of lawnmowers I've had where I've swapped the spark plug over and it's worked is amazing. So I just want to show you that that goes in there. As I said, I'm not tightening anything up yet. But a B2LM plug is the correct one that goes in there. Just to fit one, you just basically do it hand tight like that. As you see there, it's just started to nip up now. I can't do it by hand. And probably just a little bit like that. That's all you need to do. Of course I need to take all this back off as well just to put the head gasket on but I want to show you how to build it all back up and how to get it back on the mower as well. I nearly completely forgot as well. There's the recoil cover to fit but I nearly forgot the exhaust. If you get yourself a bit of wire wool and go around the outside of the exhaust where you can see it, you can see on the top of here, it just cleans it all up and it just makes a nice finish. Even if it just takes a little bit of the rust off as well when you put it back together it just makes a nice finish on there, nice flat, smooth finish. It just makes it look a little bit better. Somewhere I've got the exhaust guard as well. Make sure the exhaust guard is uh, not all bent out of shape as well. I'll show you what I mean. I've got the air filter to put back on as well. You can see here, this is actually quite good. Sometimes all these little bits are bent out of shape. But you can see around here where it's uh, obviously been burning some oil and stuff. If you just take a second and just slightly go over that. Before you put it back on without bending anything, especially if you're going to sell these and try and make yourself a profit, all these little things make a big difference. Look at that on the top of it as well. You just spend a couple of seconds doing that. It makes such a difference when you come to taking photographs and trying to, you know, ask for a good price for these mowers. So that's that. So I've got the exhaust nice and tidy. I've got the exhaust guard. And we'll put that back on. That goes there. That goes over the top. One thing to remember as well is you must wait to bolt this on at the back here because that's where the actual recoil cover goes on. 
so we'll put the exhaust back on we'll put the exhaust cover back on build it back up with the recoil cover and the air filter and the actual recoil itself so I'm just going to bolt this exhaust back on here I've got these exhaust ports here David took off and actually shown um, I should have got him to film taking everything off really but all it is is the recoil cover and the exhaust to be honest with you and um, I'll show you how to put that back on obviously it's just a if you do that in reverse you'll be able to do the same thing it's really simple to take off a, a, an actual recoil cover and the exhaust it's basically two bolts through here the recoil sits over and there's three bolts one there one at the front and one at the side so that's the only thing that unfortunately I didn't film on this video so let's just tighten this exhaust back up now oh, there's a little part missing across there just put them in there there's a little part that goes across and it clamps it all together don't want to forget that that's this little part here you can see there that actually goes there I think this is just in case the, bolt, the actual bolts try to vibrate out and you can hook these little tabs these little tabs actually hook over the bolts when you put it back in so it's obviously moved them out of the way so it's done a really good job of getting that off for us good help, good help really there's not really a lot kids can do at the minute because they're kind of uh, off school and you know they can't even go and see the mates so I just want to show you that a little bit better you can probably see there this one actually sits over this little pin that's designed to go through there I couldn't get it in before because the bolt on the head was sticking out and this one actually goes in here and tightens up I was just trying to show you not to over tighten this make sure you use the right one as well if you snap it inside the thread snaps off and the actual head snaps off the bolt you have to try and drill it all out which is a real faff which is probably why you see loads of these mowers that don't actually have the exhaust guard on so I'm going to tighten it up in a minute I'm just kind of leaving everything loose and just showing you how to put it back together because I'm still waiting for this head gasket to arrive in the post so let's refit this recoil cover there's a few little things to look out for when you do this this actually got like a cut out section here you want to make sure that this actual spark plug lead sits nicely in there you can trap this lead keep your eye on this wire that I mentioned that runs right around the side to the kill switch from this ignition coil as well and the couple of parts you need to line up when you're doing this if you've got Kevin Spacer on this side here you need to make sure that that goes under there first and you've also got these parts to line up at the other side which can be a little bit fiddly so what you've got to do is make sure everything's not trapped and all the holes line up so what I usually do is put this on over the top like that first thing I normally do is make sure that that one is through the front like that and I normally just get myself the bolt and just finger tight put that in like that and that gives me a little bit of play on everything else I'm going to slide this spacer up and under here like this and just get everything lined up get myself another bolt just to shove in here and just put this through and everything always is a little bit fiddly to line up so if you just start everything like that that should help, so that's two in, there's only three to do and we've got one more here, that doesn't look too bad actually get that lined up there, I should have another bolt somewhere as well find another one and we'll put this third one through so I've got that one started there I was just looking for a, a part off camera there to be honest so we'll get that one in, we get all three in and all you need to do is tighten those three parts up which I'm going to do now and I'll just zip these up there make sure this is through in the right place we'll get all this tight back together make sure this recoil activates which it does as well and pulls which is exactly what we want of course it's a bit difficult at the minute because uh, I can't release the brake so but I want to make sure that that actually engages on there which it does I've got this outer cover here that you can probably hear just clanking about put that back over the top there you don't normally get these on these little engines but this one's got one on and I didn't take these off so I can only guess which parts they would use for these but there's a few little bits in here and I'm just going to spend a few minutes just tightening these three parts up and really apart from the air filter which I'll show you in a second the whole thing's back together the final thing I really need to do I've ordered an air filter for this it's a little bit dirty but you can clean these with some old fuel just get it and squeeze them out and put another one in you just swap it over for in there it's really simple to do but just get this, this goes with the point side, this side here facing the back I see a lot of videos with them like that and I did this on my early videos as well and all the time you're doing this just make sure all these springs still move freely before you put everything back together and put that back on there 
just a case of putting that back in there so not too difficult to do I've got these little parts in here I'm just thinking back to why I might have had a bolt missing for the recall cover but of course when David took it apart there was one missing which is why he said it vibrated when he started it up so in fact there's one thing I just want to show you before I put that back on something to just check to normally normally have a look at and it's quite important to do really before you put this back together before you put the air filter box back on, just take a look from the top here, make sure you've got some fuel in obviously in the tank. I'll just try and show you exactly where I am on the mower. You see here there's the petrol. But what I'm trying to show here is if you look down this hole and you press the primer bulb, you can see some fuel fires across. I always have a look at that just before I refit this air filter. So we'll tighten that up and that's uh, everything really done on this mower. I need to take this apart again to put the head gasket on when that arrives but I just wanted to show you how to get this whole thing back together and I want to bolt this back on this mower and get this blade on it as well and just um, have a look and see what what sort of depth it sits at um, so that's the whole thing back together you've got all the covers on you've got the tank back on you've got all these linkages back on I bent that tab forward make sure especially on this mower make sure that that was in the correct place as well and that's not actually been trapped underneath there make sure you've got no wire sticking out around here or being caught and you can see probably see now how, how nice this looks with everything being nice and straight and cleaned as well and then somewhere there's a cover to go back on so I presume that goes in there that goes down there and there's a couple of bolts well, put on the back of there which I'll do there's a couple of screws there that just sit in the back of this quattro or faulty cover and that's the whole thing back together so great easy job really once you've done it a couple of times you can kind of strip one of these down do all the servicing you need and put it back together I will probably say in under 30 minutes the next thing I need to do is get this engine actually bolted back on this deck but I noticed I don't think I've lost this part I noticed when I took this off there's one of these missing and it was kind of bolted on a washer and I'm, I'm not sure I'm still not sure if this crankshaft was bent or not I think it's bent a little bit but I think the blade when we looked underneath you could see it was kind of sat at this height at one side and lower at the other I'm not sure if that was because the actual mounting for this actual engine here was uneven so it was kind of bolted on on a bit of an angle like that so obviously when you look at the blade underneath that'll be on an angle as well so I need to find some bits to actually uh, kind of raise this part up so we can bolt this properly underneath and get it all the right height and because the petrol tank was actually full of fuel as well I've just taken the petrol tank off so I've got no oil in here, no petrol which makes the job of getting this back on here a lot easier because I'm not sort of tipping it up and over and worrying about any fluid spilling out so I'm going to find something to put on here I'm going to drop this engine back on, I'm going to bolt it back on so after rooting through my uh, box of spares I found these parts, these are the actual bolts that went through and they went through from underneath like that and then bolted on from the top with the washer but this thickness of this is quite thick but I found all these little bits here and I thought if I put that in there like that and then that one on top like that should lie flat that's pretty much the same height as, as that it's as close as I'm going to get anyway it's certainly within a couple of mils so I'm going to put those on there I'm going to put the engine on I'm going to try and drop it back on and bolt it on from underneath and hopefully it'll uh, it'll be level Right, so I found a few bits. This has gone really quite well to be honest with you. I'm quite happy with that. That's sat there like that. It uh, looks a really nice even height. So I've got a washer under these. It's a bit too big and that one's maybe a bit small but it does the job. It's got a washer on. The bolts are through. I'm just going to tighten them up now. I've got my uh, impact. I'm going to put at the bottom and I'm going to hold this with a spanner at the other side and just tighten it up. So that's bolted back on. I'm, I'm happy that that's uh, nice and even as well. So I'm pleased with that really and I know the whole thing's kind of nice and level and we've got this uh, blade adapter to fit under here and all this is a lot easier if you don't have any fluid in it any oil or any petrol as well so it's great at the minute so I can just tip this wherever I want I'm not going to cause any problems right so that's bolted on got everything back together here you can see the other side I've got that on there these bolts are all through I've just pushed that cable back through that hole there I had a couple of little screws missing I couldn't work out what they were for David took these off earlier in the video the first one of the first things we did when I wasn't in he took these off so I put that back on there which I love because when you want to check the oil on one of these mowers the actual thing stays in place and the oil thing comes out on like an SV150 engine or something like that this whole thing unscrews so I really like the fact that that's kind of bolted to this recoil so that's the engine back the next job I've really got to tackle is just to uh, get this blade fitted underneath and we'll see 
just how far it hangs down compared to the bottom of the deck but I don't think we should be too far off and I must break myself a note just to put some oil in this before we start this up as well Alright so this is where the, uh, the fun really sort of starts really I've got this keyway oh, I'm trying to nail down there I've got this keyway on here and I've got this whole parts kind of clasped together in my hand with a bolt at the bottom I'm going to line these little holes up under here and I'm going to push this on here and hopefully this will go on uh, it's quite difficult to film because I'm kind of laid out floor which isn't a great idea but I want to get this and look for this part I mentioned earlier there's the full one so either one next to it really would be good I'm going to push that on there like that and that should stay there hopefully that should stay there and I've got the blade, make sure I get this right way around it cuts like that put this bolt through here get this on these pins here just start to tighten this up so the whole thing don't fall out That's it. I was just looking at the pins there just to make sure that they go through the hole. I'm going to hand tighten this and it doesn't look too bad. I'm looking at the edge of the deck which I'll show you in a minute and it looks to be in a very similar position to where it was with the other blade adapter on. So hopefully this will tighten up nicely. We'll have all the engine back on. We'll have this blade underneath tightened on. We'll have the actual keyway in the correct position and hopefully that will all sit together. So I'm going to get my impact. I'm going to get that all lined up. I'm going to zip that right up so it's nice and tight. I'm just looking at the actual gap between the blade and the edge of the cutting deck as well. Which is great because that's similar to where it was before. It was around about a centimetre from the bottom of this deck. Which is great. So if I get my impact on there. Apologies for the wind. Very windy today. And uh, nip that up with those on them pins like that. That should be sorted and that's got a nice sharp blade on as well. So that's great. Right, so I've bolted this on here, and you can see here, it's a little bit higher up the deck than I would like it to be, but that's as good as I can get. I've got these actual pins through here, and I've got this bolt nice and tight, and the actual keyway is doing what it's supposed to do. If I turn this blade over here, like this, you can see it's an even gap. Before it wasn't like that, I didn't have the same gap either side of the blade, and I think it's because the engine was bolted unevenly, it didn't have all the actual bolts through where it should go and all the spaces and everything like that so now I've got that on I've got an even height the only thing I'll have to do when we cut with this is pad my camera work is actually just drop the height down I was really concerned about this at the beginning because I didn't see these height adjusters but I've got that blade back on there and it's nice and even as well it's all spinning in a, a nice even way if you like I'm trying to describe it what I'm trying to say is it's the same across here, it was on an angle before and I think that's why I thought that this crankshaft was actually a little bit bent as well. I've got a nice even gap here as well between here and here and it's also the same height to the bottom of the cutting deck so if we drop the actual cutting height of this lawnmower down a little bit when we get that sorted and I've got my hands free, if we drop that down one more from where it is we should effectively get the same height of cut that we got before so that's great and that's kind of most of it back together as you can see there so a few days has passed now and this gasket's come in the post just line that up there I thought it was the wrong one slightly different in here but I think it's fine I think it's the right one all the holes line up so I'm going to put this more on the bench and I'll quickly put this on I'm not going to show you how to take everything off again and put it all back I'll just quickly show you that I put this gasket on we'll put some oil in this mower and we'll uh, try and start this mower up so this has turned into kind of a a lockdown special video on it so I was just about to do it actually I've got my own lawnmower engine on the bench there I've just been filming some vids on that as well so I'll get this back on the bench and quickly show you how to put this gasket on we'll put some oil on it and we'll make sure this lawnmower starts and runs correctly as well so all I'm gonna do is just get all these bolts and just start doing it then put these back through here like this if you do it this way you can't really get the gasket in the wrong place so just put all this back together like this. Oh look, I've done it again, look. Take these three off. I said I'd do that, didn't I? 
and then I'm going to turn it over, get the gasket wherever I've put that. You can see like this here, you can just push this on from underneath, you can just get this lined up. Let's just work out exactly where it goes. And if you line all this up before you actually try and put it on the mower like that, push these back through a bit so I can see. You can see you can't really get this in the wrong place, so you get the idea. And I've got that there, you can, you can just see how it all goes through like that. You can just push most of these back through first and then put it back on this lawnmower. So we'll just grab this, I'm just going to put this on here. You can see how the gasket has to be in the correct position because you've got the bolts through like that. Move that out of the way slightly. And I'll put this in here, just start a few of these off. And say for two or three pounds, I think it was, I think it was about three pounds fifty or something, this gasket. While that's off, it just makes sense really with something as old as this, just to replace it. So I'm not going to do my usual mistake and forget about this control arm. I'm going to put these three across here as well. And you can actually see the gasket down the gap as well if you do it that way and you just lightly start to do these. So I'll put this back together. And one other thing I must remember to do on this is put some oil in the mower. Obviously I've got to connect this carburetor back up. I'm not going to show how to do that because I've shown it earlier in the video but I must remember to put some oil in this and put this exhaust guard back on. I've got three, four, five, six. So there, there, like that. And just tighten these up. Like this. Let's just go across here. And that's it, that's the whole thing back on. I'm going to put the car back on here, drop some oil in, and we'll try this lawnmower. Hopefully, it'll run okay. So, we've given this a full service. So, I was just remembering something. I was going to top this up with this oil here. I've got some SAE 30 oil. These most take just under half a litre, I think it is. So, I'm going to have to top this up as I can't find my measuring jug anywhere. Just top it up a bit at a time. But I was just going to say that IBEA, or IBEA, I said I'd sent them an email about the part for the blade adapter, and they hadn't got back to me. I just want to clear that up, they actually sent me an email this morning which was really helpful with a full actual um, PDF to all the parts on this mower even though it's really quite old and they said let me know what parts you want and we'll um, sort you out with the supplier and we'll make sure you get sorted so thanks to IBEA, or IBEA and the customer service um, gets a big tick from me it's always nice to know these companies actually do get back to you so they've passed the uh, repair loan most for profit so customer service test if you like, I've been really pleased with that. So I'm going to top this up, I'm going to put, well say top it up, it's bone dry isn't it, we emptied it out. I'm going to put around about half a litre of oil in here and just top it up as we go along. And we'll just measure it as we go through, making sure not to put too much in. Should have really used a funnel, but luckily oh, I've got a little bit on there. So we'll do that, measure this oil and the last thing to do is take it outside and just try this mower. So I'm just adding a bit more oil to this. I just want to show you, if you, if you thread these in, to actually check them, there's no chance of you putting too much oil in. I normally thread these in. I just wanted to show you as I'm doing this, not sure well you can see, but how clean the oil is, because we drain this out from the bottom of this plug at the bottom. We have actually got every bit of old oil out. So I'm just topping this up. That's all I can do really. I should have measured this out, but as long as I don't put too much in to start, I can just keep taking this out, adding a little bit and checking it. You can probably just see there, hopefully you can just see them a little bit short there. I just want a little bit more in and that should do us. There's a wasp in here. I can hear a wasp. Must be getting there with someone else, surely. So there we go. You can see there, right on the mark there, just for full. Don't want any more in than that. Tighten that back up. Let's take this outside. Let's just make sure this starts and runs exactly as it should because we've pretty much had everything off this. Fitted the new head gasket and everything, done all the carb, got the exhaust off, we've had everything off. One last thing to do, I'm just going to tighten this exhaust guard back on the front of here, pop the air filter back on and that's everything. Right, I've just lifted that outside so I always do this kind of live, oh, you know, just so you can see exactly what's going on. 
So let's give this some more a test up, see what exactly what happens with this. So we've done a lot with this. I put a new blade adapter on. I've made one up. If you remember, and I've got the blade sharp and the deck clean underneath. We've done the carb. We've done the head gasket. I've pretty much done everything apart from the uh, starter recoil rope. But if you look in the top right corner of your screen now, I'll link you to a video showing you how to do that as well. Then you've got everything you need to know about servicing these little Briggs engines up. So wish me luck. Let's give this a go. Got oil. The fuel's topped up, and I've not tried this, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't start. Spark plugs on. Everything's back together, so. Everything feels nice as well, moves easier. It's running quite fast that, I'm just going to slow that down a little bit. You can probably hear anyway, everyone's got the lawnmower out on there doing stuff now so this is turning into a bit of an epic video you could call it like a lockdown special if you want during this horrible um, COVID-19 coronavirus period we're at so this is really turned into like a full service video for the Briggs and Stratton engine so if you like what you see here please subscribe and tick the bell notification as well don't forget a link in the uh, at the end card as well to all the videos that I've got on these Briggs and Stratton engines showing you multiple things as well there'll be a link to the website as well and other videos that you might like to watch as well they're not all as long as this so don't be put off but if you're looking to service your Briggs and Stratton mower and this video has helped you out please leave me a comment in the comment section and click the uh, the like button as well thanks for watching I'll see you again next time stay safe everybody see you next time